The Scottish moorlands, grouse country, if ever I saw it. Not that uh, you often do see grouse because they're very elusive. If they're down in the heather, they're invisible. If you flush them, they whir away like the clappers over the top. And um, it makes you wonder what could possibly prey on a grouse. Well, the obvious answer is uh, people, shooting parties. These are shooting moors. And in terms of natural predators, grouse, mm, let me see, the occasional bird of prey and foxes, yes, I would expect that. But they do their work at night. At this time of the day, they'll be hidden away in the woods, somewhere up there. So that's where I'm going. It really is dark in here, isn't it? Permanently nocturnal, which is why animals would feel so ah. Now this is what I'm looking for. Now, it seems somebody else wants to see a fox too, but they want to see it dead. This is a snare. It's intended for foxes. And uh, it would have been put there by the gamekeeper, although, of course, he will be working on the instructions of the landowner who presumably owns the shoot and makes a fair amount of money out of grouse shooting. They don't want the foxes eating the grouse. But, of course, you can't have a na little label on it saying foxes only, even if you accept that's what it's for, because any other animal could get stuck in there. A badger very easily could get stuck in there, a deer could get its foot in there. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but what happens is that this loop will close tightly round whichever bit of the animal it's got. It is in fact a legal snare, I hasten to add that, but being legal doesn't make it any less lethal. Rather sick play on words there, lethal though legal. And it's also in a position here where it could be even nastier because if the animal gets in there, and again, I'm not going to demonstrate, it would pull that tight. It's then got a much longer piece of wire, which will, because it's struggling, almost certainly get caught around these branches. And another thing that very often happens, unfortunately, is that the animal will then strangle itself by sort of trying to pull away and it'll dangle down there. And just to make sure that foxes and anything else are lured into this area. Over there, is it a rubbish tip? Is it a new landfill site? No, it's a stink pit because believe you me, it does stink. And of course, the smell of rotting animals, flesh and various other nasty things, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go in and investigate, will bring animals in from quite a long way out. But this stink pit, a bit more basic a name, and uh, that will attract all sorts of creatures and I hasten to stress that, all sorts of creatures. It doesn't matter that this is meant for foxes, it's all sorts of creatures. And another thought I'm having, actually, it's the first time I've seen this kind of setup. Uh, what a perverse piece of logic it is in a way, isn't it? That um, people want to kill an animal and the reason they want to kill the animal is to keep another animal, or in this case a bird, alive so that people can then go and kill that bird or animal for pleasure or for money. Certainly not for need. I can't go along with that. I don't care whether it's legal or not. Just as a process of reasoning. Just... Uh Follow my nose and come across another stink pit. It's a, a gloomy old place. Everything's dead quiet. Dead being the operative word because there's bones all over the place too. And, and snares, one here, all around the edges and a great line of them stretching away through the woods. And when I say a great line, let me prove it because I'm going to count them. Okay. And there it is. Number 67, yep, 67 snares set in a line right across this woodland. No animal can come from the uh, outside of the woods, as it were, and back into the safety of the woods without passing through this, this wicked wall, as it were. Uh, one small consolation, I suppose, that um, there's nothing in any of these snares at the moment, which probably means that the gamekeeper has done his job by coming out this morning and checking them. 
but what will be there tomorrow morning? He doesn't know, we don't know, nobody knows. The animals don't know. It, uh, it doesn't look that appalling, does it? It's almost like a, something the kids might have knocked up at school out of scrap metal or something like that, bend it round, oh look, I've got a circle. But believe you me, uh, this little thing can catch and it can kill. Nevertheless, as I said, this is a legal snare. What makes it legal, I'm not going to touch it, but uh, if you can imagine something going in there, then this loop would close up. But because that is free running, that bit there, it will actually loosen if the animal struggles, so it won't immediately lock. And to make sure that it doesn't lock, there is a little stop piece on it. I can't actually see it. It's around here somewhere. But that means that you get to... Um, a minimum size but frankly it isn't much bigger than that which uh, a lot of animals would still be strangled by and um, of course also it should be checked every 24 hours but here's the thing here's the thing legal or not any animal can be caught in one of these snares any animal it could be a badger it could be a dog for example and it often has been a dog and 24 hours <laughs> Well, I heard a story of a dog that got caught in one of these and died within 40 minutes. And certainly 24 hours is quite long enough for to take the life of whatever has been caught in one of these things. So, I said it before, legal it may be, but lethal it definitely is.